All right, now to recap the ultimate fight night that we saw tonight from Oklahoma. Uh, I'm going to do a quick recap of the undercard, just basically telling you the results and my picks. And they weren't that great <laughs> this time around. Ryan Jensen TKO Steve Steinbeis. I got that wrong. Mike Pierce got a unanimous decision over Brock Lesnar. That or Brock Larson. That actually is quite surprising. Um, I got it wrong, obviously. Jeremy Stevens won by TKO over Justin Buckholtz. I got that right. CB Dalloway UD over Jay Silva. I got that right. Mike Pyle got the guillotine choke in the third round on Chris Wilson. So that sounds like a, that's a fight that maybe is worth looking up. Um, it appears to have been a good one. I uh, lost that one. And I lost Brian Stan winning a UD over Steve Kentwell. Um, okay, on to the main card. Nate Quarry versus Tim Crater and what was a really good fight. Um, despite the fact that I got this pick wrong, I don't regret the pick at all. Because I think Tim Crater kind of showed exactly what I said he could do. It's just that he got dropped um, a couple times. Um, which means I, I basically kind of underestimated Nate Quarry's power. And I'm a little disappointed that Tim Crater didn't um, basically defend any. That was that was kind of the thing. Is uh, on the feet is he left himself very wide open. If they did a rematch, I would still take Tim Crater just because I think he's a better striker. I think he's a better ground guy. I think he just needs to learn to cover up a bit more and not come in like this. I swear he basically will mail it sometimes. It will be a straight, like kind of like that. But at the same time, it was not the greatest display of uh, of defense. So, uh, anyways, Nate Quarry wins the UD. Or was it? Yes, it was UD. Although the guy who gave it a 10 or 8 round to Quarry, I'm assuming is the second round. Nah, wasn't big on that. Carlos Condor versus Jake Ellenberger. Um, both fighters, in a way, disappointed me, and both fighters, in a way, impressed me. Um, Condit showed that his chin maybe lacks a little bit. They kept trying to make out Ellenberger to be this like knockout machine. It's not really true. I mean, he got decent power, but he doesn't have knockouts over anyone like particularly good. The best is Pele, and that was a way past his prime Pele. Um, Condit's wrestling kind of impressed me because I didn't think he would be able to take Ellenberger down. He outclassed him on the ground pretty heavily. Um, I agree with the split decision um, because that, that second round could go either way. I scored it for Condit because I thought when Condit was in control, he was doing a lot more damage and he was he was in a lot more dominant position. Ellenberger was just basically in his guard, not really doing anything when when he was winning. The first round was definitely Ellenberger. He dropped Condit a couple times, had control on the ground even though he didn't um, do a ton. He tried a couple of subs, but. Uh, Anyway, in the third round, I don't think any of my questions was Condit. Um, he more or less dominated at that point. Ellenberg gas a little bit. That was a bit disappointing, too. Uh, Condit is, at the times, aggressive to the point of stupidity. And uh, that that can hurt. That almost hurt him in this fight. And he probably needs to go back on that a little bit. Even though that's part of what makes him so entertaining. At the same time, you, you want to see a fighter fight to somewhat of a, a smart level. There, there's aggression, and then there's stupid aggression, and he displays stupid aggression at times. But those were two really good fights to open up the night, which you know, started us on good, and then the, the next two fights didn't quite deliver to that level, but we, I didn't really expect them to. Um, uh, Gray Maynard versus uh, Roger Huerta. I personally thought, outside of maybe the first round, this was pretty much Gray Maynard's fight. He controlled the stand-up to a degree. He was, he had all the takedowns. Um, he had a very good sub attempt in the third round against uh, Huerta, and somehow Cecil Peoples saw it fit to give a 30-27 decision to Roger Huerta. How that man gets so many judging gigs, I just really don't understand. Um, for Roger, this this fight kind of went like I thought it would. Gray is, is a bit, it just basically bullied him. He didn't, outside of that one really good sub attempt, he didn't really do anything to end the fight. Um, he just kind of controlled it. And just basically, uh, it kind of did his thing. Um, and that's, that's all there's to say about that, really. Uh, Nate Diaz versus Melvin Gallard. Diaz taking this by sub in the second round. 
in fashion than I thought so. Gillard is at times an incredibly stupid fighter, and we saw that um, tonight. I know that's you know fighter bashing, but it has to be said. And for some, and, and in some ways, this is for his own good. Um, he, he seemed to have the, a good idea in the in, in the first round. Like when it went to the ground, he got up really quickly. He stepped out of Diaz's guard a couple times. He was doing better on the feet than Diaz. Diaz looked Diaz looked kind of lost at times on the feet, and he, he did get some takedowns, which was very positive. I, I as soon as he got that first takedown, I, I think that sealed it. I thought Diaz is going to win this fight, and sure enough, he did. But it was in the second round when Gallard goes for this really really badly positioned take takedown. His neck is way out there and bam. They're on the ground and he's pretty much done. I was I was talking with uh, Byron and uh, uh, Daniel in Skype at this point. We both, you know, all three of us kind of unanimously said uh, and it's over. As soon as that takedown started it was Oh, it was just just a bad execution of a technique and a bad execution of a game plan, to be quite honest, to ever take Nate Diaz down. Um, I don't really know what more to say on the matter. It's just Glard kind of being beaten by his own inept strategy to stupidity. Um, so, my picks didn't do very well. I actually went 3-1 on the main card, which wasn't bad, but still. Um... Where do these guys go? Diaz will probably get someone else to kind of build himself off of because, you know, the UFC likes to keep building its uh, Ultimate Fighter winners, even if they did their best to kind of quash him a little bit. Gallard, I would not be surprised if he was released. Um, if not, he will receive a fight against sort, sort of a Dennis Seaver type. I mean, he already beat Dennis Seaver, but someone along that same skill level and that, that same stylistic matchup. Someone who's going to actually want to stand with him. Um, Gray Maynard it kind of puts him into the title picture a little bit. Maybe a fight with Sean Shirk would be interesting to see, or a fight with um, maybe a Kenny Florian or a Joe Stevenson, even. Or, uh, you know, I'd throw Frankie Edgar, but they already had that fight, so uh, there's, there's a number of options. Or Tyson Griffin would be another good one. As for Huerta, he's going to go do his thing with uh, the movies and we probably won't see him at least for a bit uh carlos condit he will fight probably chris lytle actually because this was supposed to be a fight with chris lytle and there's really no reason to deviate from that game plan um other than maybe they worry about his chin but i don't think they really worry about condit losing um jake ellenberger he showed well enough obviously to get an invite back he will probably fight If they don't fire Chris Wilson, uh, no, he trains with Chris Wilson. It sounds no good. Maybe a Mike Pyle or a Jesse Saunders, a um, Jesse Lennox type fight, and uh, Tim Crater, Nate, or uh, well, I should probably cover the guy, or uh, Tim Crater, and Nate Quarry. Not really sure what to do with Quarry. You pretty much stand him out as he's never going to be a title contender. Maybe <laughs> have him fight. Wilson Govea or uh, Goran Relgic, if he ever can stop getting injured. Um, maybe the winner of Thomas Drawl versus Drew McEdrys. Because, you know, that would be a decent fight to get revenge from McEdrys and just draw if fight would be entertaining. Uh, Tim Crater, where does he go? Uh, he probably gets somewhat of a rebuilding fight. Maybe against someone debuting in the UFC that they want to test. Um, other than that, I mean, you could put Tim Crater in there with anyone, I think. It's a reasonably interesting fight. He's a PJJ black belt. He's tough. He's got the warrior mentality. Um, he's got great recovery. His chin literally may not be as great, but his recovery has, is very good. He's uh, not that bad of a striker. So, uh, you know, I kind of want to see a rematch with C.B. Dalloway, maybe. Because C.B. Dalloway won on this card. And Dalloway has a win over Crater. So, that would be... That would be my matchup. Not necessarily what they'll do, but... There you go. Anyways, that's all I have to say on the card. The main event sucked the balls, but it was a good card. And uh, there you go.